This is an example of a Born-Haber problem. In this problem, you're given a table of data with reactions, and you're asked to calculate the lattice energy of sodium chloride. So whenever you encounter one of these Born-Haber um, cycle problems, I think it's helpful for you to do two things. Um, for you to first remind yourself uh, what, um, what is going on here. So you have the formation of sodium chloride, and you know that the heat of formation, the enthalpy of formation, is equal to the sum of all of the enthalpy all of the energy of the steps, right? All the enthalpies involved in each step. Remember, each um, different chemical reaction has its own set of steps. So you have to just look at what's going on and figure out how many steps there are. But in order to do that, I think it's helpful for you to identify which of the reactions is the actual heat of formation reaction, because that's going to guide all of your choices, particularly your choices about um, multiplying by a coefficient or flipping a sign. So out of all of these uh, processes, I've circled the heat of formation one. So you're forming sodium chloride, and you see that there's sodium chloride formed, right? And so um, that's the reaction that's going to guide you. What you're trying to solve for, what you're trying to find, is the lattice enthalpy. So the lattice enthalpy will be um, sodium ion, a gas state, plus the chlorine ion, or chloride ion, in its gas state, yielding sodium chloride in a solid state. And the only reason I'm writing this reaction down is because it's going to help me look at this reaction and make sure that I have all of the steps completed and I'm not needing to multiply or flip anything. So this first step here, sodium solid to sodium gas, this looks like it's written in the correct direction because if you look at the heat of formation reaction equation, you have sodium as a solid on the reactant side. And so that's consistent with this. So it's positive 109. So I'm going to call this the delta H of sublimation. We don't need to multiply this by anything or flip it. So let's look at the next step. We have sodium gas becoming sodium ion. Okay, so if we have gas in the products after this first reaction, we want gas to cancel out, right? And the only way it's going to cancel out is if it's in the reactants. So it looks like this reaction is written in the correct direction. And then we just have one mole of sodium, so we don't have to uh, flip it or, uh, or anything. So this is the delta H of ionization energy is the delta H of ionization energy because uh, sodium is becoming an ion by losing an electron. So let's look at this next reaction. So we have uh, molecular chlorine. This molecular chlorine, we have one mole of it. If we look at the reactants and the heat of formation equation, we see that you have a uh, half a mole of it. So what this means is that you need to multiply everything here by one half. So you, you'll get one half a mole or of diatomic chlorine yielding one uh, mole of chlorine gas. And then you'll need to divide this enthalpy by two. Okay? which is 121, so that's the new enthalpy. That's the enthalpy we'll use when we actually solve this problem. So we have the delta H of 
bond dissociation energy. All right. And then now we have chlorine gas going to the chloride ion. So um, we have the same number of moles. This is written in the right direction. And we can confirm that right, chloride and sodium are written in the that these two reactions are written in the right direction because of the reaction that um, is for the lattice energy where we know that sodium ion and chloride ions are going to cancel out. We see that um, we don't have to multiply by a coefficient either. And this is the delta H of electron affinity because chlorine is gaining an electron. So we know that the sum of these plus the lattice energy is going to equal the heat of formation. So now we can solve our problem. So the delta H of formation then is equal to the delta H of sublimation plus the delta H of ionization energy plus the delta H of bond dissociation energy plus the delta H of electron affinity plus the delta H of lattice energy. We want to solve for lattice energy, so I'm going to rearrange this equation. We have the delta H of lattice energy is equal to delta H of formation minus the delta H of sublimation minus delta H of ionization energy minus the delta H of bond association energy minus the delta H of electron affinity. Now we can just simply plug in those numbers. The delta H of formation is negative 400 and 11 kilojoules. Now, if you notice, the enthalpy change is kilojoules per mole in the table. Um, since we took care of all of the coefficients already, then we're multiplying this all by one mole. So it's just kilojoules. So you have negative 411 kilojoules minus 109 kilojoules minus 494 kilojoules minus 122 kilojoules plus 360 kilojoules. And this equals negative 776 kilojoules.